Hi everyone, welcome to the channel and my name is Manish Tiwari. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about Kivanet's interview questions and these are related to three different scenarios. One is related to your troubleshooting. Second one is related to the architecture and third type of questions are related to the network. So this is going to be a short interview uh, questions on Kivanet's. So let's directly start with the first question itself, which is related to the troubleshooting part. So the question is, how do you debug a failed deployment in Kubernetes? Like you were doing the deployment and that deployment has failed. So what kind of debugging process will you uh, approach? Correct. So you can check the status using kubectl gate ports. If you have deployed ports, you can uh, list down the ports. And if there are particular errors, it's getting crash loop or that kind of thing. You can check the kubectl logs and the port ID that will show you the complete details of the logs. You can check the kubectl get events. You can run that command. You can even use the kubectl describe to check what are, uh, what are all the configuration passed for your port. Correct. So you can use the kubectl. Uh, kubectl describe pod to review events and all these details so that way you can check the complete detail about the your uh, pod which is deployed and you can do the troubleshooting as well then moving to, uh, towards the second question what step would you take if a node becomes unschedulable in a kubernetes cluster what does that mean that means your node is not accepting any new pod which is uh, which even is spinning up that node is not uh, taking any new pod so what will you do you, you will run kubectl gate nodes to check the status of that node correct so if there are five number of nodes running so you can run the kubectl gate nodes that will list down all the nodes and it will show you the status of that node as well and then accordingly you can uh, do the further troubleshooting what else you can do you can look for the tents you can look for the resource limits that means if your pod requires 1 GB of memory and your node is only left with 700 of MB. So it will not accept that pod, correct? So you can check for the resource limit as well. You can check for disk space as well. Even you can fix the problem and uncordon the node using kubectl uncordon command, correct? So that way you will be able to schedule your new pod over the same node on which you are doing the troubleshooting part. Okay, let's move towards the second topic that is related to your architecture. So what are the main components of the Kubernetes control plane? So here we are talking about control plane only. We are not talking about the data plane, correct? There are two parts of in the Kubernetes uh, cluster. So for the control plane, there are four components. Those four are Kube API server through which you are used to interact with your cluster, correct? You run your kubectl command. So that's the API server. With the help of that, you are interacting with your cluster. Then second component is etcd, which stores your uh, cluster state that means whatever configuration is passed whatever is running within your cluster or the con configuration exists within your cluster or everything is stored in this etcd it's a, it's like a database which stores the complete detail about your cluster then third component is kind of uh, queue scheduler which is responsible for scheduling your ports to the nodes so whatever ports are getting spinned up because uh, against your deployments correct or against your uh, stateful sets or daemon set so all these ports will be scheduled to a particular node correct or few nodes which are available who will schedule these ports to the nodes that's the queue scheduler responsibility then fourth component is queue controller manager so you deploy replica set you deploy another job so who manages all these control uh, all these jobs or the replication controller kind of thing correct so for that there is a fourth component which is called as queue controller manager so it controls the job related things it matches the your uh, like if you are deployed five number of ports your desired is five number of ports and current is three number of ports so who will check for this so queue controller will check and it will manage those states current state equal to your desired state correct Second question is how does the etcd database function in a Kubernetes cluster? It's a kind of key value store, kind of JSON format you can say. It stores the cluster configuration in a key value store. It uh, keeps the cluster state including configuration and resource details. That means your metadata details as well. Moving towards the networking interview questions which is uh, also from the Kubernetes only. 
how does QNets implement service discovery within a cluster? When we are talking about service discovery, we are talking about communication between the different services between the one from one port to another port. How it get implemented? Kubernetes uses DNS primarily using its internal DNS system that is called as core DNS. So Kubernetes uses core DNS which allow ports to find services. When we uh, when we say that it uh, uses the DNS, how this uh, DNS will look like the kind format of syntax. This is the format. That's a kind of syntax. Service name dot namespace dot sbc dot cluster local. It's a kind of service type cluster IP. When you are writing in your uh, service file, when creating service, you are writing uh, service type, you will be writing cluster IP. So your cluster IP will be using this kind of DNS format and it will allow you to make the communication between one service to another service. That means one port to another port. Moving towards the last question. What is the role of CNI container network interface plugin in QNets networking? So the answer is CLI plugins manage network connectivity for ports. It gives a network platform for the ports from where it can communicate with each another services. So CNI provides a kind of platform through which you can, uh, through port can communicate with each other. Obviously there will be a proxy to manage the rules through which rules each gate can communicate, but it will be allowed to communicate for that CNI is there, which will play, uh, uh, provide you the platform, provide uh, platform for the port to communicate with each other. So these are all six questions related to the different uh, part of Kubernetes, troubleshooting, architecture, and networking. And in this particular video, I wanted to talk about all these questions only. In the next video, I'll be meeting with the different Kubernetes related question or any other topics related to the DevOps. Till the time, stay tuned to the channel and subscribe to the channel as well. And if you find it valuable, share with other colleagues as well to reach it uh, larger, to up to a larger audience. Till the time, thank you. Bye-bye.